Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Andrew Brinkley and welcome to this video on combining Acute 2007 with Static 99R and Stable 2007. The content of this video is based on the 2019 revised Acute 2007 Evaluator Workbook, available now through your Acute 2007 trainers. I would like to acknowledge and thank my co-authors for their efforts in producing this workbook. It was the product of several years of hard work. I would also like to thank the following people for providing feedback on early drafts of the workbook. Many of the great ideas in the workbook came from them. For an overview of the workbook, please see the video referenced on your screen. The video you are currently watching focuses only on the combination rules. Before we think of combination rules, let's take a step back. We are trying to measure phenomena that help explain why individuals commit sexual offenses. But unlike characteristics like height or weight, we cannot directly see the phenomena we are trying to measure. We infer the presence of these underlying constructs by examining different types of information. These domains map onto the static, stable, and acute risk assessment tools. Rules for combining static and stable have already been produced. You know, and they're, they're quite good, if you don't mind me saying so. But as good as they are, they still don't cover everything. She with you? I thought she was with you. In this video, I will provide a detailed conceptual and practical discussion on combining Acute 2007 with Static 99R and Stable 2007. The first problem is, what does it even mean to combine three risk assessment tools? especially when there are so many practical differences between the tools and how they are used. For example, stable is usually scored annually, but acute can be scored once a month, every other week, or even weekly. Using the most recent acute, there's a potential for an individual's risk level to change frequently. Level 2 one week, level 4a the next. As unlikely a situation as that is, it really stumped our team. We wondered, could we even combine the acute at all? Then I had a great idea. I had to tell everyone. I'm being extremely clever up here and there's no one to stand around looking impressed. What's the point in having you all? So you just slap him sometimes. River, we can't. As you could see, they were all quite pleased with me. Do you want to hear my idea? Okay. Weather. That's it. Weather. Or, to be more precise, actually the difference between air temperature and apparent temperature. Air temperature is just that, a measure of the kinetic energy of the particles which make up the air. It's what you read when you use an outdoor thermometer. For example, as I'm recording this video, it is currently 9 degrees Celsius outside in Toronto. Like conducting a risk assessment, weather networks collect information from multiple sources and then combine them together into the final reported measure. Knowing the air temperature is important, usually to making decisions about what to wear or what to expect when we step outside. But for those reasons, people often want the apparent temperature, also known as the feel-like temperature. Feel-like temperature includes air temperature, as well as relative humidity and ground wind speed. When combined together, it can provide a measure of temperature closer to people's subjective experience. Often, there is very little difference between the two, which makes life pretty easy. Other times, like during winter, the air temperature can be deceptive, because with the wind chill, it feels much colder. 
This is not some trivial detail. For example, it could mean the difference between wearing a sweater and a pea coat or wearing a parka. My weather discussion parallels what we are doing by combining the acute. Imagine you have an individual at a static, stable level 4A. That is analogous to the current temperature. But you want to know what this individual's risk looks like day to day in the community. Just like I want to know if the current temperature fairly represents what I'm going to experience when I step outside. This is where acute 2007 can be very useful. In most cases, I would expect that the current risk-relevant behaviors and circumstances of this individual are fairly typical for someone at that risk level. Acute 2007 is telling me that he is presenting with an amount of day-to-day -day problems that is typical for individuals at level 4A. In other cases, someone's risk might be much lower or higher than would be expected, similar to feel-like temperature. I hope you see now how important it is to combine acute with static and stable and communicate that with others, for example, in your case notes or in reports. Acute may have unique information about the individual that is missed elsewhere. With the conceptual discussion complete, let's move over to the mechanics of combining the three scales. We tried different methods and found that the best option was just copying the same approach used in combining static and stable. You can say, we pulled a Thomas Edison. Uh, what's that? What's that thing you're working on? Well, it's a light bulb and- A light bulb! Light bulb! Yeah, I invented that! Me! I'm Thomas Edison! I invented the light bulb! Uh, what's it do? It lights up a room using electrical- Lights up a room using electrical stuff! I was about to say that because I invented it! Uh, what are you working on? It's a phonograph. Phonograph! Uh, I knew that because I invented it. I'm Thomas Edison. I rule! Look it up. Edison was a jerk. You can read about the combination process on page 7 of the workbook. The core idea is a concept I call modeling disagreement. Essentially, we want to capture the unique information in the second scale that is not contained in the first scale, where the two scales disagree. I can give you a visual example of what I mean. If you imagine the x-axis here is scores on scale 1, and the y-axis is scores on scale 2, we would expect there to be a positive relationship between scores on the two scales. Individuals with higher scores on one scale would likely also have higher scores on the second scale. This can be easily modeled using linear regression. Most individuals will cluster around the regression line, but others will not. These cases are the outliers. They are doing something unique. We can express this by measuring how far they are from the regression line. These orange figures are the disagreement cases that we are going to model. In this context, we are going to begin with the five standardized risk levels produced by combining static 99R and stable 2007. Just like in the previous example, we used linear regression to figure out what acute scores are expected at each static stable risk level. These were the results. At level one, most individuals had a score of zero. At level two, most individuals had a score of one, and so on and so on. Because some variability in scores is expected, we created a threshold for defining an extreme score. The threshold we used is one to two acute 2007 units. For level one, we would not be surprised by an acute score of zero or one, but a two or higher would be abnormal. At a level two, scores from zero to three are still in the expected range, but scores of four and higher on the acute are abnormal. We continued this process until we got a chart like this. The colored cells in the middle represent scores on acute that are expected at that risk level. Going back to the weather analogy, static stable risk levels are the air temperature and acute is the relative humidity and wind speed. 
the colored cells would be situations where the humidity and wind do not significantly impact your experience of the air temperature. But what about extreme cases, represented here as the white cells? Let's use level 1 as an example. If there was perfect agreement between the combination rules and my weather analogy, then we would provide risk levels in the white cells to reflect the risk the individual is currently presenting. But we decided against that because it leads towards the situation of potential rapid fluctuations in risk levels. Instead, we are simply saying that the risk is higher than would be expected. It would be like me saying, Hey, I think you're going to be too warm in that coat. I know it's only 10 degrees outside, but it feels really warm out. Let's use level 4B for another example. Similar to before, we won't be saying that someone with an acute score of 0 or 1 is acting like a level 4A. We will simply say that their current risk is much lower than expected for that risk level. In other words, oh, don't let the temperature fool you. It's really cold outside. You should bundle up. This is the complete table you will find in your workbook. It is also included at the bottom of the new tally sheets for quick reference. We strongly recommend that acute scores are interpreted within the context of static stable risk levels because of how much variation exists. To make that last point clear, let me provide you with another example. The average score on acute in the normative sample is 2, but a score of 2 has different interpretations at different risk levels. At level 1, a score of 2 would place an individual at the 85th percentile. This individual is quite unlike most individuals at level 1, and additional risk management steps may be required. On the other hand, for an individual at a static stable level 4B, a score of 2 places them at the 22nd percentile. That means over 75% of individuals at level 4B have more current behavioral or circumstantial problems than that individual. Now that we have covered both the conceptual and practical aspects of combining static, stable, and acute, I wanted to leave you with a case example from my own practice to demonstrate how combining acute with the other tools can be useful in formulating risk. Before I begin, I want to give my client a code name to protect his identity. Let's see. Oh, I'm usually so good at this. I'm your new undercover agent on loan from Scotland Yard. Code name, The Doctor. These are my top operatives, the legs, the nose, and Mrs. Robinson. I hate you. No, you don't. That's it. I'll call him Mr. Robinson. Mr. Robinson committed some very serious violent and sexual crimes when he was a young man. He is now in his 50s and was referred to me to help his transition back to the community. I saw him for quite some time and scored him on static, stable, and acute. Let's have a look at his scores as I would have presented them upon being discharged from treatment with me. Beginning with the static 99R, we can already start forming a picture of who Mr. Robinson is. As I said already, he's in his 50s, but he spent most of his life in jail and never really had a chance to form intimate relationships. The static's criminal history items really tell a story of a person who has relatively more general criminality problems. He did, however, have a boy victim indicating, in this context, a potential attraction to children. Overall, Mr. Robinson received a score of 6 on Static 99R. This preliminarily places him at Level 4B. Individuals at Level 4B are expected to have multiple problems and require intensive treatment over long periods of time before any improvement is observed. This description really fits with Mr. Robinson, as he had already been in treatment for decades before coming to see me. To get a more current picture of Mr. Robinson, let's have a look at his stable 2007 scores. His stable tells a very different story than his static. He does continue to socialize with some antisocial individuals, but he has more pro-social peers now. He has no intimate relationship and reports not wanting one. 
He admits to having atypical sexual fantasies in the past, some of which included children, so a score of 2 on item 12 is given. It is worth noting that for the past five years, he has been on testosterone-suppressing medication and reports no sex drive, fantasies, or urges. The absence of positive scores on the remaining stable items is noteworthy for someone with so many previous violent and general offenses. When he was a young man, he described himself in such a way that I could really see the potential for him scoring higher on items like negative emotionality and hostility, or a lack of concern for others. But there is no evidence for these items currently. According to all staff that work with him, he is prompt for meetings, respectful, and engaging. None of the staff have any complaints with him. Overall, he gets a score of 5 on Stable 2007. This places him in the moderate density category of problems. Let's use the static stable combination table to see if stable is providing any unique information above static. So on static, he scored a six. The first thing you will note is that the average individual in 4B has a score of eight or higher on stable. Mr. Robinson had a score of five on stable. This now places him in level 4A. With the static and stable completed, Let's stop and imagine that I did no other risk assessments, and this was the final interpretation. It would not be unreasonable to provide a recommendation for a high-intensity treatment program. Individuals at level 4A are still expected to be struggling with multiple problems. Mr. Robinson does have some chronic problems. To provide a bit more context, because of Mr. Robinson's crimes, he was always someone staff were worried about returning to the community. This is one of the reasons I scored acute after each session. This is the new acute 2007 summary table with Mr. Robinson's scores. A blank copy of this table is included in your workbook. I actually created this table originally for this case because I anticipated questions about Mr. Robinson's presentation while in the community. Mr. Robinson's final acute, highlighted in yellow, was a zero. He almost always scored a zero, except for two situations. The first score of one was related to hostility, an expected issue given his history of violence. It involved an argument he got into with peers, one that he did not see at the moment was inappropriate, but later regretted. The second score of one involved seeing children at the grocery store. This is also consistent with his previously reported attraction to children. He reported this situation to me, and we worked on avoidance strategies. To combine his acute with static and stable, let's first look at level 4A, and then look at the column for a score of zero on acute. According to the acute, Mr. Robinson's current risk is much lower than would be expected for an individual at level 4A. The integration of these three risk assessment tools provides a nuanced image of this individual. Mr. Robinson is at a level 4A, but his day-to-day -day risk seems to be lower than expected. Scoring acute also helped with treatment recommendations. This table is just a useful way of summarizing the information I collected from the three tools and how that informed my treatment recommendations. From static and stable, I can see Mr. Robinson has deeply ingrained problems related to criminal thinking, hostility, and at least atypical sexual interest. But with acute, that there's little to no current expressions of these problems. Overall, Mr. Robinson will need further supervision and support to safely reintegrate into the community. But... He currently seems to be doing as well as can be expected. I hope that was a useful example, and you can see how static, stable, and acute are stronger together. If you want to learn more about the Acute Workbook, I encourage you to check out the video referenced on your screen and available on my YouTube channel. 
Please feel free to share this video for training or teaching purposes. I'm happy for you to use the video or the slides themselves in your own presentations. I just ask that you leave the slide intact and reference it accordingly. Also, feel free to contact me if you have any questions and comments. If you like the video, then I hope you check out my other videos and subscribe to my YouTube channel.